In order to create an effective story, you need two things. Something to say and someone to say it to. I'm assuming in this case that you've already got something you want to offer and an idea of how this is going to benefit them. But you need a clear idea of your ideal customer. I always used to write IT related things for one of my old computer aided design customers. This guy ran a factory that made pressure vessels in Runcorn. He was a really bright guy, but not particularly well educated apart from his technical knowledge. So I always worked on the presumption if I could write it so that Brian would get it, it would be fine. Now you need to construct a similar persona to write to, and you have to really understand who they are, how they think, and what their values are, what motivates them. The pictures that we have here illustrate a couple of models I use in my own work for teasing this out. The first one is a thinking styles model that says, basically, we all have a right part of the brain which deals with the pole and the left part that deals with detail. And we have the sort of the frontal lobes which deal with thinking and the rear part of the brain, the brainstem, which is to do with instinctive activity. If you basically sort of create a little sort of two by two matrix, you get four archetypes of the way that people can behave. And I mean, really, we're all blends of all of these, but we tend to predominantly function in one of these quadrants. So you can see they all see the world differently. I mean, you have to understand your own bias and the likely biases of those you're speaking to. You know, if you're an explorer, you like new things, you're stimulated, you're always looking for new ways of doing things. If you're a analytic person, you always want the details, you want to be sure that you're not being taken for a ride. And, you know, if you're one of those people who really likes to just go out and do things, you don't like rules and regulations that get in your way. So if you, for instance, start using charm on an accountant, the result is going to be misery. Now, the next model is to do with values. Here you can see the colours and sectors represent the spiral of values and the kind of places where you might find those values. You know, people who believe in order tend to end up in the police or the church or the, or the army. People who want to make money for themselves on a large scale go and join corporates. And people who want to sort of do good in the world on an egalitarian basis go and join charities. Now, the theory basically says that people, according to what happens in their lives, get popped from one set of values to another according to what happens to them. And they tend to flip between group orientated and being self orientated. As you go up the spiral, people are able to be comfortable with dealing with more variety, with more ambiguity in the things they have to face. So the lower positions believe in a given hierarchy and rules, and at the top you become much more flexible and able to integrate the left and right sides of the hemisphere to build knowledge-based industries. That's the essence um, of how you have to take these things into account to construct the person that you want to talk to so that you can address them in their own language in a way that will get a result.